Hello again, it's Joey John McGuire. I'm in my favourite watering hole, the Oyster Rooms Weatherspoons Pub, come Lloyd's Bar. It's on the first floor, top of the escala escalator, and uh, located in Fulham Broadway, underground station uh, in the shopping centre. Uh, that's on Fulham Road, Fulham, London, United Kingdom. I'm about to recite my latest poem, which I did in the early hours of this morning. Um, it's also the last poem in my latest book, which is Colorblind. It's called Too Early. <coughs> <coughs> I had seen the look before not in someone else so much as in my own reflection, the vacuous stare that I would forever associate with head trauma. My eyes were quick to search for the depression and quickly found it. It wasn't hiding, nor was the inner heart pulse within, like an alien bursting to get out such shocking sadness. For me, the memory was years past when a moment of madness had changed my life forever. In his case, it was an accident, the end result, though different, so very similar. The vacant stare that without doubt will haunt me all the days of my life, a legacy of horror. Who needs scars when memories like that can stop a heart? If only I knew then what I know now. Driven by an inner compulsion, I tried to help. I felt compelled to say something to a fellow victim like someone had once helped me. But he wasn't listening, still too early for him to accept that part of him was gone forever. I told him the truth, blunt I know, but I deemed it to be necessary to tell him he was now a fully-fledged member of a new community, of how the days and years had played out for me, the slow progress that was recovery, as my mind swapped sides while sorting out the tangled jungle, jumble it had become, and how painful the whole process had been. I also told him never to give up hope, because although he'd lost parts of himself he and others treasured, he would discover new attributes and qualities about himself that he never knew he had, nor believed could ever exist. I told him the arrow of time would guide him, not to be impatient, that destiny would choose its time and place without much help from him, assured him time would decide what the rest of his life would hold. I told him that as the trauma healed, he may be pleasantly surprised to find a better person had morphed, filled his vacancy with someone vaguely recognisable, but also refreshingly new. But he wasn't listening, still not ready for the truth and in a strange way I could see the shoots of hatred sprouting towards the messenger. That was me. True story.